beekeepers here it is 120 volt oxalic acid vaporizer I'll go through all the parts individually uh, that it takes to put one of these together and give you some shots so you get some detail if you want to put one together yourself and what it's made out of okay and then I'll go through how I made it and I'll plug this in right now to show you the pit controller. It takes approximately eight minutes. I've seen some other people who have them that heat up extremely fast. It's starting off at 18 degrees. That's the stagnant temperature in my shed. So there you have it. Now we'll look at the time. It's 50 seconds or so when we plugged it in. And now this pit controller tells you if you switch right here, it's using 100% power to get this up to temperature because it knows it has to go to 230, which is its set point, and it's going to go for 230. So we'll let that sit there in the meanwhile. Uh, just go over it. It's a four foot whip cord, PVC handle, nut, pit controller, PID controller uh, from a company in Atlanta, uh, stainless steel band, plastic band on here with a muffler wrap. This is just to cover all the electrical. Because I have nothing to encase so you don't touch the AC power. Uh, it's all shielded on here. Thermal couple line that goes up to the bottom. This is what I made, and I'll go through the pieces on the board here. A stainless steel cup, flared, copper sleeve on the outside for thermal density, the brass band heater that's on there, and then I made I brazed a stainless steel quarter-inch stainless steel tube because the copper ones do bend. I didn't want that to happen. Recent change in the design from one ceramic chip to two ceramic chips to protect the thermal couple wire coming out of there. Uh, really no great design that I've come up with that I can get that and in there. I changed to a regular hex head uh, stainless steel bolt and then a 3 16th inch bar. You'll see here it's, it's a little thicker uh, just for the say so. It makes it easier just to weld the little cross stand on there pop riveted the ground in there and like I said it's a band heater it's right there so as that gets up there it's already up to 84 and it will get up to 230 here in a few minutes so to put one of these together for youtubers that want to do it on their own stock steel 3 16th inch get about uh, I forget it's like a foot or so I make measurements and I do it at the time but it's about a foot quarter inch Stainless steel tubing. You gotta have a pipe bender to make the pipe bend. So when you make your tube coming out of your cap, it sort of looks like this. You go for the distance because you have to set your distances for your cap when it goes down on here so that this is deep enough into the cup past the ridge, but yet the tube doesn't hit the bottom of the cup. So it's down about seven eighths of an inch right now where you actually do it okay and then when a ceramic disc and everything else and this comes pretty close to being level with the base as you can see right here when it's in your hive it's pretty close to sticking out level with that for distance works out really good uh this is stainless steel tubing and it's pressed inside and then i put the copper i tried this one it's not a good one i just did this one as a test one I press that inside that, which they all have the copper sleeve on it, but it's not pressed this high. To make that press, El Cheapo socket, took it to the lathe, ground it down a little bit, press that in there to make my flare in the vise, which makes it nice. The band heaters, you buy on Amazon, 110 volt slash 220, that takes either, and that's your band heater. Then to make your caps to go on, which go on here and you press those in when the ass is upside down and then it goes in there that holds the o-ring high temp o-rings teflon you can buy a one foot section of teflon and then you have to cut it on a lathe bring it all back down to size and measurements and all that and then you make your own caps which are just teflon caps your specifications and holds two grams of uh, oxalic acid in there and you buy o-rings from the o-ring store online 
far as the pit controller goes, this is the instrument out of uh, Atlanta, I believe they're out of, and that's the model, A-U-B-E-R, S-Y-L, and specifications are all on there, model number, serial number. Uh, this is with a built-in mechanical relay, so this one actually doesn't have an external or solid-state relay, it has a mechanical interior. Thermal couples that they sell, pretty cheap, about four bucks a piece. Uh, this is your homemade oxalic acid scooper, which is a half inch copper cap. That's about two grams. You just buy a package of those at the store. You need a cord end for your PVC, so when you put it in for your handle, that holds on your wire. Plug, you can get any type of plug. Uh, the ceramic discs, as you saw on here, are all like this. You have to buy a drill if you're going to do the ceramic. I'll show those real quick. I didn't take them out. But at Lowe's and Home Depot, if you are going to drill ceramic, diamond bits are the only way to go. A little bit of spray water bottle, and it goes right through. Perfect cuts, no cracks. And you can do a pretty nice hole for anything you want to do out of ceramic. So, that's that part. Hardest part making for this this is the key to all these vaporizers this brass billet that goes inside here gets heated up by that band heater brass has a better thermal retention and density than any other aluminum or whatever people are using you could probably get away with steel but well heck if you go on steel we might as well just do the brass and then you got to have your center quarter inch 20 I did mine and then after I mount these, I mark it for the quarter inch thermal couple, which basically gets drilled and put into there. And that gives you your temperature for your pit controller. So that's the parts. And then you see the extra stuff on here. Like I said, this is muffler wrap. This is out of the uh, volcanic stone that they make. And that's basically this stuff right here. You have to, and without a doubt, if you don't read the directions, buy the silicone spray or some type of spray to coat the ends. These will fray like there's no tomorrow, and you'll have nothing but strands going everywhere. When you cut this, it will start to fray. Spray the paint first. Just spray the material on there where you're close to your measurement, then cut it after it's dry. Use a heat gun to basically heat that stuff up and dry it really quick so I think I covered all the parts that you have to have or do to make one of these uh, takes a little bit of labor a little bit of time uh, I am selling them for $225 because I went out and purchased a mini lathe to make those brass parts and also to turn the Teflon caps here is another unit that's completely done and ready. I just tested it out uh, just this past few days. I shouldn't turn the camera, I guess. There's uh, things. It's got oxalic acid still on there from the test. Basically heating it up and get those two caps, two spare O-rings, and oxalic acid vaporizer. Same thing, two ceramic discs, stainless steel tube, the brass billet in, in uh, cert and all put together for you. and let's see what the temperature is on this oh it's at 230 degrees so it's about eight minutes or so is usually what it does it in so now this controller unlike the other guy i think johnny o's you can check out his might be dirt cheap but his controller and i don't know why maybe he didn't set it or uh auto tune it but it should maintain 230 plus or minus a degree now when you drop your oxalic acid in there which is cold you know dry powder slash somewhat damp powder uh, into there that's 230 degrees it immediately starts to vaporize going out the tube and out the front very quickly this controller will drop from about 230 down to about 215 right in that area and then you'll see it stops dropping. That's a temperature where 
all the vapor is gone and it's done. And it'll go from 210 to 212 to 213, 215, and it'll go cycle straight back up to 230 and cut out. You might have like a degree or two overshoot like that. You see that? One degree overshoot. But the controller won't give it any more power and it'll cut it out. Whoop, seeing it's hitting power, it's going to even spike it up higher. But it's, 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 it's algorithm basically tries to keep it within a degree of 230, which is pretty good. So it reheats up to 230 from 215 pretty quick, probably a minute, and then you can do the next hive. After you do about seven hives, you'll notice oxalic acid crystals start forming inside the tube and the so-called things. Your indication is, and this is hot, I'm going to try to do this one-handed. I'll if I can do it this way. When you're doing this, and you press down on this thing, and you put this cap on, I don't want to put my hand on this because I know it's going to probably burn me. These are pretty hot. So you press your cap on. I'm not getting a really good video of that. Push the cap on, and when you get cap popping, when you turn it over, and the vapors all shoot out, and all of a sudden the cap decides to go pop. I'm going to pull it off here. Doing this one-handed and it was hot. I should be doing this. Especially out with my gloves on. I'm not even gonna bother. Let's see if I can grab this thing and get it off. Without burning me. Okay, I did. So you'll get what they call cap popping, and they'll tell you this. That finally clogs, and they say, Oh, keep pipe cleaner. Don't do that. Just take this off, fill this with water, and it's gonna cool your fill it down, the brass fill it down, and in, in the other models, I don't know what they're using, aluminum or whatever, but you really cool it down. Take water, put it in here, turn it upside down, do the same thing you would do with the acid. Once that water goes in there, it steams, it blows out, it cleans the tube out. Do that twice, your temp controller will probably drop down to about 190 or so. It pretty Well, this one does. I, I, I take note about 190. And then it takes you know, a minute or two for it to warm back up, heat back up to 230. But that is completely clear again, and you can continue to do hives. I do four hives at a time in my bee yards. And then I travel to the, my next bee yard to do the next set of four, and so forth, until I'm done with 24 hives, uh, a few different locations. So that's just some input on what these do. But I knew I could make it better and cheaper than the guys that do the Pro Vape. Pro Vape guys don't use brass on the inside. And if you know anything about thermodynamics and heat retention, this brass right here will stay hot and retain the heat longer than any aluminum or even steel because of the density. So that's also why I use these insulators to keep the heat off the handle and had no problems with it. But those are all the parts any questions just email me or comments anything to improve it or change the design maybe uh like i said this is all just off seeing different things and putting it all together and there you have it that's all the uh, equipment that you need basically to put a oxalic acid vaporizer together so that's Back at 230 degrees, that's what it usually does, maintains that, and it's pretty steady. This pit controller is very, uh, I call it pit, PID controller is very good uh, out of Atlanta. The algorithm is very good. I've auto-tuned it per the instructions. It's very easy to do. The menu is very easy to run through uh, on that controller, and it works phenomenally. I've been treating since December, uh, not with this one, but the one I have in my box, which is identical, so I've just made a few of these and I'm selling them online if anybody's interested. That's about it. Any questions, feel free to ask.